Welcome to this live episode of What's Up Doc. This is your diet doctor, Dr. Josephine Grace Chuaroha. For today, we are here live in Tambayanihan Garden Cafe. So we are going to talk about fasting. If you are a part of our community in Facebook, which is Low Carb Feasting and Fasting Community, you probably know by now that I've been planning into doing an extended fasting comes Monday. So this is in celebration of Lent season, but most importantly, it is part of my annual uh, let us say fasting retreat. So I've been planning and doing Longer fast for a while usually every three months So the last long fast that I did I think was way back in August that was the longest so far which was 12 days and this year Although I did a lot of EF or extended fasting, extended fasting for those first time listeners is the fasting that we did for that we do for more than 24 hours. So in contrast with intermittent fasting, which is the daily fasting of say for example 12 to 23 hours, it can, it can have different variations. You can call it in so many ways, so many other terms like for example 16-8 based on the schedule of your fasting and eating window. And at the same time, you can do OMAD or one meal a day. That is fasting for all, almost 20, 19 to 23 hours in a day and only have a window period for eating, which is an hour or up to five hours maximum. So with extended fasting, we actually extend the fast more than 24 hours. So you can have ADF or alternate day fasting wherein one day you eat the other day you don't eat and then so on and so forth as by experience we did it for a month I think I did it twice two months for twice already in two years so the first one was a good experience it actually attributed my healing on my eyesight because of that ADF as you know I've been wearing glasses before for astigmatism and also uh, some errors of refraction in my eyes but after fasting for many months and doing alternate day fasting i miraculously if what you can call it sometimes others will thus will not believe it that easily so it can sound as miraculous but actually it is just a an expected healing process when you go into fasting and low carb lifestyle so with extended fasting we can have different variations you can do 48 hours or two days you can do 72 hours three days or others can actually do for five days or seven days so I'm planning to do first a seven day fasting and probably I would like to extend it by plan because you know things can happen but ideally i intend to go into a two weeks fasting the first one would be quite challenging and i don't encourage anybody to do it as well unless you are prepared mentally physically to do it but for those who are first time first timers when it comes to fasting even if for internal uh, intermittent fasting or if you can start maybe if you want to join you can start this journey by just doing if so if you haven't started yet or if you have started this is the right time to upgrade to app up your fasting schedule so if you've been doing for example you can eat say for example uh, three plates of meals uh, during the first time that you did OMAD or you, the first time that you did low carb but eventually once you are appetite corrected you can actually just eat just the normal way just like one plate good enough already for the whole day so those are the things that you can consider when doing this for those who are pro fasters like a lot of our moderators in life without rice and low carb feasting and fasting community they've been fasting for three days five days seven days and so they are some of them are also doing dry fasting even so for those of you who are still afraid of dry fasting and somewhat think that dry fasting is such a crazy idea don't worry i feel the same way i thought the same way before but when you once experience doing it yourself once you tried dry fasting it can be really really what we can say liberating because even water can be so addicting and actually we don't need so much water of course water is essential we need water all the time but there is this science behind dry fasting 
that anybody especially for us who want to heal something can also benefit so the first our topic for tonight is pre-fasting preparation what are the things that we need to prepare okay so we can prepare other things we can prepare our uh say for example our electrolytes what are the things that we need to do before fasting and what to expect during fasting but most importantly the most important thing that you need to pre prepare before fasting or the pre fasting preparation is actually yourself mindset is will make you ready 95 to 99 percent of the time one percent will, ju will just be the physical physiological challenge also the uh, routine challenge especially if you are not yet ready with your schedule with your work for example but 99 percent of the time if you are ready in your head if you are prepared to do what needs to be done you can do it so i've been into fasting as a background especially for our first time viewers of this episode by the way if you can please share this episode share this live video to your timeline so that your friends and family can also understand why you are doing fasting so i'm a doctor i'm a licensed physician and although i do fasting coaching but this episode this uh live fb episode will not replace your doctor's recommendations and prescriptions this is served only this will serve only as a guide as part of your knowledge just like you can consider it as a commercial when you are watching television say for example and you can decide on your own if you think you can benefit from it or if you think you want this lifestyle as well so as a background i've been doing extended fasting for more than two years now so i celebrated two years of extended fasting last february one that was together with my partner and my mother who is already 65 years old we've been doing this for two years two years ago we jumped in to extended fasting of four days and a half without any previous background but just the science behind it just the the research behind it trusting that it can be done for if you are a religious person if you believe in the bible jesus did it for 40 days and it's not something because jesus is somewhat uh different from us of course he is way different from us but during that time he was in a body of a human and it can only it can only prove that the human body can actually do so much and we can do that too and it's actually consistent with what the science consider now as each average person each average individual even those who are not obese those who are not overweight actually have the fat stores they have the fat stores in their body that can allow them to do a safe water fasting for six weeks okay so as a disclaimer if you already have your medications with you if we are already diagnosed with illness say for example a chronic kidney disease diabetes you have medications to lower blood pressure to lower cholesterol you might want to do a consultation first prior to doing extend extensive fasting or at least do your own research so if you want to to have a one one stop look so we have books for that we have perfect at last weight the book one it is an evolutionary perspectives guide in attaining an ideal body weight the fastest most natural way so although the topic or the title was geared more on weight loss it is actually a fasting protocol a fasting protocol that any of us can actually benefit even if you don't want to really lose that much of a weight it can give you the protocol of fasting for healing so before i start started fasting i did something that i wanted to improve before sorry for that interruption i hope you are still there so can anybody confirm if you are okay so before we proceed i would like to say hi of course number one commenter sir ronnie nar sensei hello po thank you so much hello and glad to see and hear you again and so am i i'm so glad that you are here gina de guzman meneses good afternoon so we are already coming to sundown 
and Jerry Reyes Abandal. Eileen, hello, good day. Always following you here in Taiwan. Wow, so good, so glad. I've never been into Taiwan. I hope to visit soon and I hope to see you there. Linda Lara, how are you? Muragwindi, kaayod has in you. Yes, I think uh, there's a typhoon. That's why medyo, it's quite cold here. And as much as possible, as much as I'd like to talk to you in Bisaya, in Tagalog, in Ilonggo, but I am so happy that we are on international platform. So we are here in Good People TV and also in uh, Global TV Network, London, New York, Asia, where some of our Filipino fellow Filipinos abroad are watching and listening to this episode in their local radio channels there. So I'm so glad that we are all here. So we would like to make it since it's more international. And also I've received a lot of messages coming from our from India, from Roop. I would like to, uh, to have a shout out for Roop. And also my dear friend, Maulik Patel, my dearest friend in Cebu, who's also an Indian national. So we have a lot of viewers, varied viewers, and also even in the USA. So thank you so much. So Jerry Reyes Abandal, and of course, Elise Rose, Juliet Gurita and Mendoza, High Park Shen, hello. Hi Park Shen sounds Korean, but I know Hi Park Shen is Filipino, I think. And Chloe, my dear, all the way from Japan. Lee Bag N, hello. Good evening. Watching from Bataan. La Senora Shop and Ship shared already. Thank you so much, supporter Yan. So we support all of the low carb business businesses, especially the small enterprises, because they are not just earning, but they are also helping in education educating the rest of us the rest of the filipinos in this way of life so rosette benson valda of course one of our moderators in life without rice congratulations on our 10,000 mark members so that is i know there are a lot already of other groups with much 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 bigger scope but we are happy with our little community that's starting to grow bigger and we are we welcome everyone all the new members of life without rice life without rice group have been there for i think two years already but we've never really been very active it started just as a group for family and friends to share this way of life and eventually little by little word the word of mouth spread and a lot also of readers of the book finally come to appreciate how life without rice can actually become sweeter because it can be healthier. So we are happy. We are celebrating life without rice 10,000 member milestones. And with that, we have a lot of surprises. We have a lot of, of um so uh, raffle draws for those members and we will do that later before we end our live episode so mary ann gajero hello at valenzuela this is my first time watching your video i will watch the previous videos after this new member here hello ad thank you so much we really really welcome new members and pardon the excitement of our neighbors here and you know we are here in the philippines so it's an open community everybody is just doing their thing so a lot of basketball and also tricycle so it's everywhere and uh, sharon well done. nice to nice topic yes we will get to our topic very soon and Aveliana kasha amazing dog oi omad pa ako na try yes we all we can start with omad and omad is a really really good thing don't say that you are just starting OMAD only because for others OMAD can be the ultimate the ultimate hardest thing to do so you are actually doing great already hello Rhea Salamanca hello and of course Connie Anthony Fabular so we are outdoors but actually we are just indoors we are here in our balcony in Tambianihan Garden Cafe so it's quite windy and the breeze is so cold Connie Anthony Fabular hello Eleanor Papio Caranzo hello always present I'm so glad you are not late and I'm so happy that you have you find the time Jerry Reyes Abandal visit here in hong kong i've been to hong kong twice ba in hong kong and so it's a very very nice city to to really visit a lot of sightseeing and a very nice culture and it's not far you don't feel like uh like a tourist or a foreigner because there's so many filipinos around especially if it's on a sunday so ella loyola good day doc fellow ilongo here in qatar hello I, did i go to qatar i've never been to 
Qatar. Only Abu Dhabi. So, follow gid ako sa inyo. Thank you so much. Yami Merlin, good afternoon. Kathy Bertudes, Diodato Adamas, Amy Barha, watching from Albay, Mel Garcia. Albay, I have a good friend there. Doc, um, I call him, I, I call him differently, so baka hindi nyo kilala. Basta the doctor who is based in Albay. Mel Garcia, Falguera Joyce Casas, Ana Valiana, question doc, makafast ba ang naay breast cancer? And pwede ba silang magkito or LC lang? I know, the can similarities ba ang LC or keto. Am I correct? So we will tackle that in a while. Mitchell Pagaduan Domingo, good evening. So those are our early birds for this episode. So to start, what to prepare with your low carb Low carb, no, not low carb, but fasting, uh, your plan for fasting. So with fasting, the, the first thing that you need to prepare is your mindset. So with mindset comes knowledge. You can never go into something that you don't know what you're getting into. So the most important part is knowing that our body has the capacity to do an extended fasting for more than 24 hours so what i will explain to you is the science behind how come our body can still live without eating say for example as to my personal experience eat without eating for 12 days how can i survive and how am i not looking very sickly or dying despite doing that and how come i intend to go into a two weeks fasting mm -hmm. at this point in my life and how am i the only battle the only challenge actually is just the mental mindset uh i remember the last time i did a 12 day fasting on the 12th day and half it's almost 13 days i actually don't feel hungry hunger wise weakness wise i don't feel weak i don't feel weak i don't feel hungry i didn't have any cramps I am at the top of my health. I feel so active. My thoughts are very clear. But what failed me, <laughs> somewhat what failed me, is actually the longing for food. So I've been missing food for so long, even if I don't need it anymore. But for, during that time, my longest fast then was 10 days. And I've had my own gauge of goals and I've already reached them. So I didn't have any more motivation or things to prove on why i need to go further so that's why i broke my fast on that 12 and a half days but physically i was doing okay so how come i am okay and how come the rest of the thousands members of other fasting groups can do fasting for as long as 50 days there there are even those who did fasting for 100 days and on medical records the longest fast that a person did was actually 382 it was burberry something uh what was his name i forgot his name so you can google it so the longest fasting ever recorded was it andre burberry something like that that's the name so 382 days but of course he started as obese class too no so so talaga. so it's so big and what they did was just electrolyte supplementation water and some salt and i think he did some broth some broth but nothing solid no solid so that was the longest fast ever ever recorded before so for the pre preparation the first thing that you need to do is to acknowledge that your body can sustain longer fast than you ever experienced in your life so the first day of fasting this is given that you've been into a low carb uh you you've been into a regular diet which is a high carb diet so the and if you've been into low carb especially keto diet these fa these phase might not be this long it might take it earlier okay so we will tackle that the reason why i did keto or high fat diet few days before my intended fasting because it will actually make the transition from glucose as a source of energy into ketones so that will happen if you have been into keto diet already but for those who have been on regular diet like for example the first first time members of life without tries who've never been into keto or, or never been into low carb but for some for some reason you want to indulge into extended fasting you have to recognize that during the first day without eating your body 
is still high on insulin and when your body is still high on insulin it will still crave glucose as a source of energy and will still not tap your fat stores as a source of energy so during the first 24 hours your body will scavenge will look for will try to to get all the glucose that it can get from your bloodstream okay so all the blood all, all the glucose that in your blood vessels roaming in your blood it will try to to get that and also all the remaining foods that possibly in your gi tracts your your gastrointestinal tract your stomach your your small intestines even to some extent your large intestines you can they it will get all of the nutrients there to get all the glucose that it needs okay and when once it's depleted so after 24 hours your so your uh insulin will start to go down but and you will feel very very weak very some even have signs of hypoglycemia so they are trembling in the in their hands they feel like fainting they feel so weak so if you give in right then and there so you will just repeat the cycle of depending into glucose as a source of energy but if you only persist that's the time that your body will already start to get your into your liver so there is what we call glycogen glycogen is a storage form of glucose it's like a reserve glucose in the form of glycogen it's like a complex kind of car carbohydrates so that is the reason why athletes before a marathon before a before a sport before a intended sports event they go into carbo loading so carbo loading will induce glycogen formation so that during for example they're running at the 30th kilometer all of their blood glucose are already depleted so they can tap on their glycogen at f as fats as storage for your glucose so comes 24 to 48 hours of not eating your body will tap on those glycogen it will break that down and still produce the same glucose at the same time it will go into gluconeogenesis gluconeogenesis is the process of your body creating its own glucose so we have a lot of sources of, of ingredients to create glucose within our body so it can be from the triacylglycerol triglycerides on your yes that is the one that you measure in your lipid profile so you so your body can already start after 24 hours hours your body is already starting to break ketones okay so with ketones the fats in your body is already being released being already formed into ketones but part of it it's still dependent on glucose so with that glucose coming from glycerol of triacylglycerol or triglycerides will be produced into glucose okay so your body will go into gluconeogenesis and also there is this uh, gluconeogenesis that's coming from proteins so this is where a lot of people are afraid of fasting because they think that proteins will all come from their muscles and they will go into muscle loss so muscles only a very minimal part of it will be removed to to do gluconeogenesis to be used in glucose formation but it's not just the proteins in your in your muscles it's not just the amino acids from your muscles but actually it is the amino acids and proteins that are already redundant in your system say for example the ones floating in your eyes the the protein bodies that's been blocking your brain function that's why you are having brain fog the other proteins that are blocking your joints that's why you have joint pains a lot of back pains so all of those actually are extra redundant proteins that we don't need and fasting will be the best opportunity for us to get those extra proteins and be used it and recycle it into what we consider as neo neo glucogenic gluconeogenesis or the formation of glucose from scratch so that is where autophagy comes in autophagy is the mechanism of our body of cleansing itself so it eats up the gar garbages that we've accumulated over time and those garbages are in the form of proteins and glucose glucose derivatives that it can use through the process of gluconeogenesis to produce glucose so during that 24 to 48 hours we are in the very fast phase our liver is very active to produce glucose so our liver has the capacity to produce about 
2,000 kilocalories worth of glucose or glycogen. So for a 70 kilogram man, that is actually enough to fuel the whole day of activity given that that person will still be doing the same physical activity that he's been doing, okay? So, but for those who are, say for example, very, very relaxed, not much, not much physically active, so that liver, that glycogen stores in the liver can actually last them for three days if you've been having a sedentary lifestyle and you are not thinking because our brain is actually one of the most active glucose uh, eater in con consumer in our body because you are fond say for example of watching netflix or watching movies or watching t television that doesn't need to require active thinking so you are actually burning less so if you want to to engage more your brain which is which can also help you deplete your glucose stores faster you can watch videos that wherein you can learn instead or you can be critical like this episode like this live video wherein you can think if i I am if am I really making sense or am I just getting this from the cloud without any scientific basis so at least you're thinking so with that alone you are actually consuming more glucose so comes the second date going to third day it can vary from person to person that is why there is what we call as uh, death fast that which is wherein the people are very much pushing their body to the limits they do a high intensity interval training they do a very high intensity workouts they even do cold showers they run and then they do a lot of activities that can really deplete their glucose stores and glycogen stores faster than than just waiting for it to be depleted from our natural processes in the body so but if you don't do that especially if you are not yet ready for to do such extensive kind of fasting so you can just go on your nor normal day or you can even schedule those days as rest so as for me the first week i intend to go about my day without any active without actively looking for more things to do okay because every day i usually have a lot of things that just suddenly arise and i have to do it as soon as possible so for those of you who knew me you know i i can be like that i can do a, something that's not thought of this morning and something that i just thought of a couple of hours ago and then i will do it and i will insert it to my schedule but this coming week i intend to do with i intend to just stick with my schedule wherein i will still see patients if they're patient but i will for those who will if there's no patient i will not look for patient i will just stay in the house or do some cleaning but i will not do some act things to to that are out of my routine so that's what I plan to do during the first seven days so during the first three to two to three days that is where the hardest could be for others especially for those first-time fasters so because it is the transition between the glucose as a source of energy and ketones so mind you we actually don't use proteins directly as a source of energy so that is the reason why our muscles can be preserved during fasting because we don't use it but our body will convert amino acids which is the building blocks of proteins and convert it into glucose and convert later into ATP but since nature is so intelligent since our the creator of our body the creator of our of our genes is so so beyond our so divine in, in terms of in terms of intelligence in terms of the magic behind our our dna he made it in such a way that we protect our muscles so comes third to fourth day if our body sense that there's really no food coming in it will now start activation of full ketosis wherein majority of our 
energy will come from ketones. So ketones is the energy fuel that can arise from fats. So fats that can come from our visceral fats, the one that makes our belly very big, very large, the one that's making our buttocks large, the ones that's making our arms large, and also the ones the dang most dangerous uh, the most dangerous cholesterols actually are the ones that keeps on floating in our bloodstream and the ones that are co covering our internal organs okay so we have the those visceral fats that are covering them and we have blood cholesterol that can cause atherosclerosis that, that can cause blockage and later on can cause a uh, heart attack and stroke so that's the time that ketones will be produced because our body knows that it is not sustainable to keep on using proteins for our energy because proteins is very essential in our life it's very essential in our system in our cells so it will preserve that because if you think about it as cavemen as hunters and gatherers before if you don't have enough muscle strength you we couldn't have survived this long or else without muscle strength we wouldn't be able to to conquer those boars those deers or whatever animals that we used to hunt as humans and we will not be able to live this long but our nature is so intelligent it gave us the strength to continue with our journey to survive because that time we will now be fueling on ketones and fats because by nature we really store fats for fasting periods or for periods where we don't eat anything at all and comes fourth day to fifth day is actually bliss okay so that's time that's the time that you no longer feel weak that's the time that you feel at your best your brain is so sharp your stamina is so good and even your focus is so good because by nature that's already the time that we are in our hunting mode so that we are always on the look for food or whatever so since it's now a modern day time and we no longer hunt we can now maximize that fasting that focus that ha hunting mode into something more productive so i've been setting aside a lot of my to-do list so right now i have a lot of to-do list and actually that's one of the most that's one of my major motivations in doing this extended fasting because i've had to-do list way back last year that i am supposed to finish by november 2020 but since a lot of things happened again that's what i told you a while ago i can be very very impromptu i can i can be very spontaneous and of course i can be really really what we call as apurado okay i can be that and i tend to set aside things that sometimes i feel like i can set aside but this time i want to finish them before the end of third quarter before the end of first quarter of this year that's why that's the main goal of my extended fasting because fasting actually will not just clear our head personally speaking fasting is the only way that i can do things that i that i do and a lot of time i can have my focus and i can have my needed my needed full attention to do the things that i should do and don't worry i will let you know all of the projects that i've been meaning to do so especially sir alan kura knows that we still have a pending project with our website and those are just one of the many things that i still need to do so that's the main reason and also if you are a catholic if you are into if you are celebrating lent as well if you are culminating lent as well so lent season that's what they say fasting will enable us to savor feasting so lent season of 40 days is actually meant for us to savor the feast that will follow because if you've never really fasted it is said that you've never really feasted because eventually those feasting time we it will not be feasting time as long as you never had a fasting time you will never just like the night you will never appreciate the day if there's no night and vice versa so it's really important to have an intended time for fasting so that we will be able to celebrate more of the feasting so every day as you know we do intermittent fasting so that intermittent fasting actually will make us enable us to celebrate life every day 
by savoring our foods by savoring our meals and even thinking and savoring before swallowing the food that we eat Spe specifically because we've earned it after the fasting time of say 16 hours 18 hours or 20 hours so comes with idea that our body already starts to use fats and ketones as a source of energy after day four or day five you can then now safely fast for as long as you still have fats in your body so as long as your body body fat percentage doesn't go below critical you're actually safe to go on a fast okay so if you are if you are a man so technically if you are strict about it the essential fats that we have in a in our bodies for a man is actually just two percent so that will just cater the brain and the nerves in our nervous system and for women it's about five percent but mind you the not the current guidelines now is for women to be considered as normally normal normal body fat percentage if the body fat is 35 percent and below so imagine how big 35 percent of body fat as compared to the essential that's only five percent of body fat but of course if you have five percent of body fat you already you will already look like an international uh three-time gold winner of running in olympics so that's how fit you would look but if you don't want to look like that or you want you don't want to look like you are dying for some so you can just go even at the 20 20 percent body fat or 15 percent body fat and as for men athletic men already the very fit ones very muscular ones they can already already have the fittest let's say for example who's the fittest person you can think of i don't know so maybe the younger days of Arnold Schwarzenegger when he wasn't that bulked up and yet so that physique actually have around 10 to 12 percent of body fat so if you don't want that so if you want just for example say for example just a little toned so 15 15 percent of body fat for males is already looking really really good okay so most of the men most of so my physique for example i my body fat is around right now is around 27 to 28 to 29 around that time maximum would be 35 30 i guess the lowest body fat i have recorded i think last year last year no not 2019 after my 20 after my 10 days of fasting was i think around 19 so i look really really thin although i don't mind but that time my body fat percentage is really low and i don't even look thin for me i don't really look thin but others since they know me as me so knowing the, knowing but for those who knew me for the first time they don't think i'm that thin so it can be different so if you have a body fat percentage recorder for your weighing scale there are a lot of digital weighing scale that can already assess the the body fat percentage so you know you are safe to do it as long as you can but if you have to do a water only fasting you have to be to you have to lay still you don't need to do anything but if you plan on doing an extended fasting but with with the regular activities of daily living you better make sure that you are loaded with the right vitamins and minerals before your fast so if it's for athletes that they do carb loading we also do electrolyte loading prior to fast we don't need to take more than what we need but we just make sure that before our fast we are taking the needed electrolytes that we do so what i have here are the are the very essential or very basic electrolytes that we need so what we have here we have here the salt so it is the pink himalayan salt so it is in granules type so it doesn't need to be like this so you can have any salt table salt sea salt rock salt iodized salt all the salt that is real sodium chloride salt you can take that so you just make sure that before your intended fast you take one teaspoon to one one to two teaspoon every day before your intended fast and 
if you plan on doing a regular activity during fasting days you want to have this and you can just take a pinch and then drink it so that you will have you will have your own your own sodium source because sodium will be easily depleted during your fast so we have guests i think tita hello tita good evening <laughs> hello so with uh, sodium you need you will need this because uh, it will make you it will answer actually most if not all of the early symptoms of of hypoglycemia what we thought as hypoglycemia during the first few hours of extended fasting like the first 24 or 48 hours a lot of fasters stop fasting because they feel weak they feel like they're having muscle weakness they're having leg cramps they are having difficulty sleeping uh what else they feel like trembling or all of those they feel even like fainting and usually a pinch of salt put it in your mouth and drink a little water observe for five minutes and you will just steadily you will then feel good you it's like it's what we call the salt fix no and that's what i always say there is even a book about it like, entitled salt fix so salt is really necessary and comes uh if you plan on doing daily fasting initially you won't need them but if you want to go in an extended fast and you've been into low carb way of life for so long you might need to want to do this this is a magnesium citrate so any brand is okay so these ones are the ones we have in lcf essential stores so but if you can order online you can do so but we have a one-stop shop if you'd like that and of course we also have potassium so potassium so these are just supplemental dose so these are not the high doses so this is 200 milligrams so our rda is 400 grams per day so you can take them potassium is better taken at night because it has a calming effect so it will help you with sleep if you have problem or even if you don't have problem with sleep and potassium you can take anytime so you can take it first thing after you wake up and of course also in the afternoon if you want so you can do that and since i plan on doing an extended fasting there might be time that you might feel like giving up no so you might feel like giving up like you feel very very weak or, or you feel like uh you are trembling already so you can but you don't want to break your fast right then and there you might just try to to see if it can be elevated and you can continue with your fast so what you can take actually is the coconut oil so we have this is pure coconut oil can you see that so this is pure coconut oil okay so this cold pressed coconut oil is virgin coconut oil so it's just the same so others can have mct oil because those oils can be converted easily converted into ketones so maybe especially during the first five days your body might be having a hard time transition transitioning from ketones and glucose as a source of energy so getting mct oil or coconut oil can actually help your body adjust easier from that very critical moment of adjusting between ketones and glucose as a source of energy so those are most important things but uh there are still so many things to talk about and especially with uh fasting and now that we also welcome dry fasting so that would be another topic i actually intend to do the first few days if i can if i can do the first week even of dry fasting but that's for another topic and that is quite somewhat reserved for those who are already been fasting for so long so starting monday we will talk about fasting all about fasting as i be with you as i will be with you during during the whole time i hope to be with you during the whole two weeks the first week i will still be here in bakalad but the next week i will be on my fasting retreat so if ever there is a signal there i will continue my live episode but if ever there's none uh we will have a replay of some episodes if ever i can't be with you but hopefully there is a there is a signal there so that we can continue our journey 
But for Monday, we will have episode on more, still more on fasting. So that is a more extensive discussion of what will happen during the first day. So comes Monday, 5.30 p.m., that will be already my first 24 hours of fasting. And comes Wednesday, that will be the third day. And comes Friday, that will be the fifth day. So if you want to try to join and do whatever your schedule will fit you you can join as well and if you want some tips we have a low carb feasting and fasting community that can help you if you have any questions but before we end since our time is already running up i would like to uh, answer the question that was asked by i think Anne. so for those with breast cancer can they do fasting or keto actually cancer is just extra proteins in our body so i know someone who already did who did 20 days of fasting because of a lump in her breast so it was even before i discovered fasting myself so when we talk about it she is also a doctor so we accident she was still an intern then so we talked about it while in the or and she learned that by that time while we are having that conversation uh, people already knew I was fasting while doing operation set. Yes, I do surgery surgeries even while I'm fasting. And don't worry, I never endanger the my patient's life because I've been doing that for quite some time. And I actually I perfor I perform better when I'm on a fasted state than when I am full. When I'm full, I don't focus well. I can't concentrate well. But when I'm fasting, if I skip my lunch, I skip my breakfast, and I continue on my surgeries, the, uh, those surgeries lined up for the day, I have the best results. So that intern told me that she actually had an experience of fasting for 20 days because of a lump in her breast. She was already scheduled for surgery, but she tried looking up in the internet and she actually saw fasting as one of the ways to heal and without telling anybody she did it on her own because she was i think she was um just renting a place because she was still a student then and after 12 20 days actually the mass was not there anymore so you can believe that you may not believe that but the science behind it it's just autophagy your body will start on eating up those unessential parts of your body in order for it to survive and one of the most unessential parts of your body is actually the tumors the masses the cancers that are growing there so and low carb is of course they can do that for those who have breast cancer and all other cancers because low carb what it is what we say it doesn't have any contraindication low carb can be done by everyone and keto keto is just a stricter form of low carb so low carb is just minimizing the carbohydrate intake of 20 to 50 grams per day regardless of your other caloric requirement coming from say for example from fats or proteins but with keto your 60 to 75 percent of your caloric intake your caloric needs should come from fat so it's really a very high fat low carb diet moderate to minimal proteins only so keto is actually reserved for those people who are who can benefit from fasting but cannot afford to fast because they do not have stores already in their body so those who are what we call as kakiksik so skin and bones those who are looking like skin and bones so they can no longer afford to fast or else it will already resorb they don't have any fat stores left so they already only have skin and very little muscle and bones already so fasting will not do them good but what we, they can do is do keto because keto is a fast mimicking diet it's like your body will be fueling on ketones will be fueling on on fats a source of energy but that fats is coming from your food and not from your body so yes that can be done but for more detailed uh instruction as to like using fasting for healing and using using keto directly for healing i advise that you seek proper consult with a physician knowledgeable with fasting so that you will be guided well or else there are a lot of misconceptions especially if you look up in the internet there are a lot of other things that can misguide you and can lead you to a more problem than having the solution so richel pagaduan good evening ayan
Kang Sur represent. Hello, and Angela Ramos de Los Reyes. Good evening, Ivy. Good evening, then. Marvi, hello. Connie, watching together with my son. Wow, hello. Thank you so much. Been doing IF 20, 40 hours fasting with him. He's 17 years old. Oh, that's good. So it's okay to start them young as long as you don't starve them. If you they feel like they want to eat, they can eat as long as they stick with low carb. Okay, hello, pa. Enjoying my life without rice. My blood sugar is now controlled. And how to start preparation for water fasting? So that's what we discussed. And congratulations to this growing community. Wow, 10K. Yes, 10K in just a couple of... I think we've been... One of our moderators, Lyra, she said that when she joined, there were just around 20 of us there. So amazing how we are now into 10,000. So Marvi, I'm in for EF. I will try until when makaya ko. Last EF is five days. Hoping to surpass it. Okay, that's good. I really wish you well. I hope we can uh, talk more about it in our group live uh, local PC and fasting community. Ana Jaldikito Anito will start two days, Doc. Yay, that's good. Angus Barberi. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much angus barberry i just remember burberry so angus barberry fasted for 382 days that's right that's the longest ever recorded fast in the history so ebrio de raquel doc okay lang po ba mag fasting daily 16 8 yes of course if it's still helping you but if you've plateaued already you can extend so you can upscale your fasting you can make it 18 or 20 but if you're already losing more than what you need you can also shorten it to 14 or 12 hours so Manetsky, hello pa it's okay we can always do a replay hello mommy hello verna i'm abel hi doc i'm happy kinakabot ko sa inyong live yes likewise here i'm always happy to have you always present i'm so happy i feel like i left a lot of family in cebu so mommy happy nakahabol pa vanessa grace diet hi doc hi tita and of course Clo, my dear kana ichi so much love and colorful love you are admirable you have somehow transformed the lives of many keep up the good job now so that's my mommy my very very beloved stage mommy so thank you mommy richel pagaduan domingo paano po malalaman ang body fat doc so there is a formula that's quite uh, complicated it's what uh, the u.s navy uses to compute for the body fat i will try to post that in our page but for a shorter note there are actually a lot of uh, weighing scale that instantly computes the body fat so it's not perfect but at least you'll have a gauge so a uh, lot of yan uh, blankera kailan ko yan kailangan ko yan doc electrolytes potassium and magnesium because yes uh before the first seven days were first four days five days and seven days of fasting that i did i didn't actually took any electrolyte just salt so i stopped because i was already feeling weak in my legs so in the hospital where i used to work there's a ramp there and i barely can finish the whole ramp because my legs are very very weak so that was already signs of low magnesium and potassium but with my 12 days fasting already been drinking potassium and magnesium then so that's why i was able to do it longer and the only reason i stopped was just since december that i wanted my body's been craving for fasting and i know it may sound it may sound too much but for regular fasters you know you can understand how your body is really looking and craving for fasting so eleanor papio caranzo mct oil is love good eve po kim kim poy pala boy always there and supportive doc parika po magnesium should be taken at bedtime potassium in the morning when is the best time to take vitamin c taking vitamin c will already break your fast so break your fast so meaning if you take vitamin c just take it during your meal time okay but when you're fasting you actually don't need to drink vitamin c so sharon Rodan, you want to join doc what kind of fasting did she do who the one with cancer water only fasting but she didn't do anything she was just uh, the one with breast mass nasa bahay lang siya. she was just in her boarding house just doing water fasting just laying around for 20 days that's all so amazing journey science can really do wonder autophagy did dis dissolve that lump and vanessa what's the allowable fasting time for pregnant women so for pregnant women fasting shouldn't be forced okay 
the pregnant a pregnant woman and a breastfeeding woman is the timeline in a woman's lifetime that they shouldn't worry about fasting they can eat when they are hungry but it is important that they also consider that pregnancy shouldn't be an excuse to keep on eating so there is a difference between keeping on eating because you are pregnant or you feel like you have an excuse to keep on eating and fasting because you don't want to to like for example gain weight so that is a very superficial reason your body your baby needs all those nutrition so you just make sure that when you eat it's low carb it's not loaded with sugars it's not loaded with processed foods if you want yourself and your baby to be healthy so fasting time it will depend on the person i know someone who's a regular faster and even during pregnancy she can continue to fast 12 to 16 hours but mostly just 12 especially the, during the first trimester first set, first two trimesters of the pregnancy because that is when the baby is abruptly very rapidly growing so you need to focus that on the baby and not the mother and as for food you just make sure that when you do eat it's low carb okay so marvin said don't do fasting when pregnant yes that's what we do so don't do intended fasting just listen more to your body so jo jocelyn satre jocelyn satre de los santos good evening add balance well uh, can can i do five to seven days fasting without taking magnesium supplement just pinch of salt of course you can do that my experience though with with fasting without electro electrolytes after your refeed which is very very more important refeed refeeding time or breaking your fast is actually more critical more serious than when you are fasting so if you don't do electrolyte supplementation while you are fasting you are risking yourself of refeeding syndrome that is when the moment you break your fast especially if you don't plan it well and you just suddenly engulf and go on feast say for example you are risking yourself of refeeding syndrome so refeeding syndrome is the instant withdrawal of all the electrolytes and glucose in your bloodstream and it will be readily absorbed by yourselves who have been very very hungry for so long that you are end up you will end up in hyponatremia hypomagnesemia hypokalemia hypoglyce hypoglycemia so all of the electrolytes and needed glucose in your body will be depleted and you can even go into coma if that will happen in a longer fast but five to seven days although you will not lead into coma that doesn't happen that much especially if you don't break your fast with carbohydrates with sugar loaded foods you can just have minimal refeeding syndrome so all the water weight that you've lost will instantly go back you will go into a somewhat a starve refeed after starvation mode wherein your body will feel like very very hungry and you might be getting all the nutrients and you might not be able to stop the hunger that will kick in the moment you start eating because your body have felt so undernourished so malnourished for that five to seven days without electrolytes and and without electrolyte support so by experience i did already 10 days 10 days and half without magnesium and without magnesium and potassium and it's only salt so somewhat it was okay i survived but there was a refeeding syndrome meaning after i broke my fast a lot of my water weight instantly went back and of course uh the that is the danger of what they say uh rebounding to where you were of course uh, of course i didn't rebound to where i started but a lot of the weight loss that you can get or a lot of the benefits that you can get from those fast might actually not be maximized if you don't supplement well with electrolytes okay so but it's up to you if you think your willpower if you think you can control those hunger thinking that you know you can override your hunger coming from from the fasting period or the full starvation period of those five to seven days then you can also do that okay but for proper guidance guidelines when it comes to fasting i advise that you read at least the perfect last book one on weight 
So it is a fasting protocol. So Joanna Marie, always helpful your content. Thank you so much. And it's before doc, but with your information, I'm inspired to extend my fast. Wow, that's nice. Good evening, Pod then Doc. Doc Nerisa De Parini of Cebu. Linda Lara, hello. Hi La Salong Salik Mindala Mindalano and Jen Purutan. Any recommendation for fair hair loss? Three months on keto diet. So care loss in keto diet meaning you are not not eating enough. Actually, you've been on starvation mode. You are not eating the right foods. Either you are eating too less because a lot of people mistaken keto with low caloric intake. So actually, no. If you see our post, we are actually like feasting on our OMAD. We eat one meal a day, but it's a heavy, very heavy meal. And of course, make sure that you in, you have enough electrolytes, sodium and magnesium. And if you've never been supplementing sodium and magnesium you can also do some potassium supplementation during the first two weeks and after that you can just maintain on magnesium every other day and sodium every day one to two teaspoon in a day so lisita cabaluna good evening just join the group for first timer to fast what do you suggest please for first timer to fast i really suggest to either read on it watch the videos or read the book on perfect at last it's the one way ticket to fasting the people who have read book one can actually easily fast if their first fast which is 12 days uh, 12 hours they can do 24 if they're 24 they can do three days they can do five days they can do seven days okay dennis lawan will replay this doc later thank you Pa. thank you so much doc it means a lot to me helping a friend who has bc and i invited her in this group and is doing lc for two weeks now surely this will help her i wish her well the same okay Melanie Arbuzan, for healing, it's really better to just fast and not work out. It's up to you. If you want to double up the speed of your healing, you can do working out. You can do that. It's up to you, really. So, But just know that when you are healing, your body is focusing on repairing the system and working out or exercise is another stress that can compete with healing. But for maintenance alone, no problem with working out at all. So, Bappy is watching, recognizes the place where you are, said Tambayanihan. Of course, Bappy, welcome. You used to be here every day. So, hello, Doc Nico. Thanks for everything. Thank you, Dinda. And Jen Kurutan, thank you so much. Marisa Manalo Andal, thank you so much. So, thank you. And we will actually have a raffle for our Life Without Tries as we reach the 10,000 members. So, we will post it later who are the winners of the 10. 10 books of Perfect at Last Health, Eat to Heal. We also have a winner for the Paymaya, 500 peso load. And I think we also have two boxes of pure grass barley. And also, I think uh, LCF Essentials will, will also give away our ultimate pastry, ultimate keto pastry mix. A, key, a pastry mix, a keto friendly, only 7.7 .7 gram of net carbs per tablespoon and three pancakes. You can already do that with just one tablespoon. So imagine 0.7 grams in three pancakes. So we will give that away for you guys so just wait for the announcement thank you so much that would be all for now and comes monday and monday i think for two weeks if i can sustain the two weeks plan of fasting we will keep on talking about fasting and if you are there and you'd like support or if you'd like to grab a copy of the perfect at last books that can also be done so do we already have the numbers not yet not yet okay later we will post it with our the ones who are gonna receive the copies of books we will give away 10 books so these books are valued at around 890 pesos individually and the keto pastry mix at 350 per pack like and kindly like if you can kindly like this post and those who can like this post ah, okay so that's me that's actually my sister-in-law angel so if you can like this post so that you can possibly receive this this gift from lcf essential so that would be all for now i'll see you again this coming monday so always fast as long as you can and if you do it always stay low carb so that you will stay safe Maraming salamat po. goodbye